Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're going to be looking at some interesting documents that the Navy produced to determine the historical significance of some of their vessels. This is important for vessels because it will help determine not necessarily whether the vessel itself gets preserved and turned into a museum, but whether objects from the vessel is preserved and documentation relating to that vessel and how it's fast-tracked to be made available to the public. So, um, first off, you can look at these documents yourself. They don't go back all that far in time. Back through 2010, they are available online on NAVC's website. And there, there's a link in the description below for this. I suspect that is when this process was started because that is when the guidelines for this process were published. However, it is possible that there are older versions of, of this process out there somewhere. I just don't know enough about the government process. Uh, the, the crux of it is the Navy operates a lot of ships, has over its history operated a lot of ships. When they decommission ships, they preserve objects from them. So there's a branch of the Navy called Navy History and Heritage Command that has itself a branch that is the curator's branch. Those are the curators of the United States Navy. And when a ship is decommissioned, they go out to that ship and they take historically significant pieces from that ship to then be uh, preserved by the Navy. So it can be used in both the Navy's museum system. The Navy has 10 museums so far, they're working on a national museum, uh, around the country that these objects can be displayed in, and they're also made available to other appropriate nonprofits. Battleship New Jersey has uh, double digits, close to triple digits of objects on donation from the Navy. Uh, things that when New Jersey was decommissioned, they took as historically significant, and uh, when we were turned into a museum, we got them uh, to loan them back to us to put on display in various places around the ship. It's worth pointing out that this is not just for ships that are preserved as museums. The Navy does this for all of their ships. Now, the problem is that there are a lot of ships that the Navy has operated, and there's a finite amount of space and an even more finite budget that Naval History and Heritage Command are operating under to preserve these. Remember. While their job is important to the Navy's mission, it is not the core mission of the United States Navy to preserve its own history. So, their funding is almost certainly less than it should be, given how important their job is. So, the question is, how do you fairly determine which ships you're going to take a lot of objects from, and which ones you're only going to take the, the very core objects that are off of the checklist, like the ship's presentation silver, if it has any, the ship's bell, uh, the builder's plaque, things like that. But first, here's a word from our sponsors. The Navy is thinking about which of their ships deserve more historic preservation. Which part of my childhood deserves historic preservation? Saturday morning cartoons. And you can't watch Saturday morning cartoons. Oh, man, I wish they would re-release G.I. Joe. Uh, without breakfast cereal. Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented. Right now, you can build your own variety pack of these cereals. If you haven't tried them before, this is a great opportunity to find out uh, which of their flavors you like the best. Classic flavors like cocoa, fruity, and peanut butter and also newer flavors like birthday cake, cinnamon roll, cookies and cream, and my personal favorite, blueberry muffin. I wish YouTube had a smell function so you could s just tell how much the blueberry muffin smells like blueberry muffins. In addition to cereal like this, you can also get cereal bars for if you don't have time to pour yourself a full bowl. All of these have zero grams of sugar, at least four net carbs, and at least 12 grams of protein. So you can start your morning out right. Their cereal bars have one gram of sugar. Click the link below to get your own Magic Spoon cereal today. Remember, 
You can build a variety pack to test out which flavor is your favorite. And remember to use the discount code BATTLESHIP to get $5 off your next purchase. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Also, for my Canadian and British fans, Magic Spoon also ships to Canada and the United Kingdom. As early as 2010, the Navy received guidance from the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, uh, this would be from March 15, 2010, on... Uh, it's called Program Comment for the Department of the Navy for the Disposition of Historic Vessels. So this documentation talks about how you can determine the historic significance of a vessel so that you can best spend your resources to preserve the most historic stuff. Uh, it's worth pointing out that while this probably has something to do with what ships are put on donation hold and are... Um, preserved as museums. I'm not sure to what extent. Uh, this, these documents are on the same part of NAVC's website that talks about the ship donation program. However, uh, I've often talked on this channel about how the most historically significant ships often aren't saved, and the ones that are saved are, are more often than not just in a lucky situation rather than being uh, wildly historically significant. But uh, let's look at what determines historic significance. So first off, I've printed off one of the sheets from this website. Again, uh, there's the link in the description below if you want to click through and look at all of the lists. They seem to be ships that uh, were either decommissioned or held in mothballs from 2010 to the present day. And uh, so let's look at the aircraft carrier Kennedy. We've gotten to go on board Kennedy. The Navy opened her up for us to take parts off of to restore New Jersey. Uh, before we were allowed on board, the Navy curators had already gone through and removed historically significant pieces. Since we've been on board, uh, the ship has again been opened up, this time for the crew of the new John F. Kennedy, still under construction, so they could look around at some of the sailor art and other uh, historically significant parts of the ship for... Um, incorporating into the new Kennedy still under construction. And almost certainly, when that ship is completed, Naval History and Heritage Command will loan them some parts of the original ship that they had saved and uh, preserved. Uh, these documents all seem to be relatively similar. They have a picture of the ship. Uh, they talk about the ship's uh, name, hall number, uh, the class, Kennedy is listed as a unique ship, a variant of the Kitty Hawk class, uh, and the vessel's location at that time, in active ship's maintenance facility, Philadelphia, uh, and her current status, stricken, final, disposal, pending, uh, which this one, this evaluation is from uh, 2016. Uh, she has since been sold for scrap. But again, that final disposition is still pending. She's still here as of uh, today in June 2023. She's still sitting in the Philadelphia Navy Yard awaiting final disposition. She'll be towed to Brownsville for scrap once they finish with uh, her near sister ship, Kitty Hawk, most likely. Uh, so next up, we got the important stuff at the top. Initial evaluation date from 12 July 2016. The ship was deemed to be ineligible. Um, and then the final evaluation date from 20 September 2016, so a couple of months later, eligibility for listing to the National Historic Register of Places, or eligibility for listing to the National Register of Historic Places uh, was deemed ineligible. So they looked at the ship that has uh, something like 50 years of active service and determined that her service, while valuable and uh, important throughout the ship's career was not historically significant. So how could that be the case? We're, we're talking about a ship that had probably 25,000 sailors and marines uh, go through her complement as either part of her air detachment or the ship's company. So this is a ship that served her country for a long time since the Vietnam War and had a lot of sailors come through. But uh, she's a capital ship. How is she not historically significant? What are the criteria for that? Uh, so Let's continue through the report. 
There's some of the uh, critical information, the same sort of information you find on, on the sidebar on a Wikipedia article, the commissioning date, the ship's displacement, that sort of stuff. A deployment summary uh, talks about all the major events the ship is a part of. Awards, pretty long for Kennedy. Uh, noteworthy events that the ship was uh, associated with. This section is significantly smaller. Despite all the awards, all the battles she fought in, noteworthy events are she was redesignated from a CVA to a CV, uh, and the ship's import cabin was designed to be a living reminder of President Kennedy. Uh, and then, does the ship have a Dictionary of American Naval Fighting Ships entry? And here it says, yes, it does, but only up through 2005, which may not cover the ship's whole career. For example, Battleship New Jersey's Danfis entry does not cover the, the ship's whole career yet. So, uh, that is one of the things that determining historic significance prioritizes. There are tons of Danfis entries. The Navy has to periodically update them, and, and they haven't finished all of them. So which ones get done first? The ones that are deemed historically significant. So Kennedy's probably will not be completed for a while because she is not deemed historically significant, and her entry already goes up to 2005. They're not missing too much of the ship's career. While New Jersey's is missing her last decade of service, and the ship was deemed historically significant. So, finally, finally, uh, we come down to the criteria for evaluation. There are five criteria, uh, and these were established by that document I told you about earlier. The uh, program comment for the Department of the Navy for the disposition of historic vessels. And again, this documentation is available online. Uh, the, the government is very transparent when it comes to this documentation. So if you want to look at the documents I'm talking about in this video, there are links in the description below. You, you can search for them if, if we forget to link them or if the link is dead. And, and they're available. We were able to find them in five minutes of searching today. Your five criteria. Was the vessel awarded an individual presidential unit citation? Uh, so this is the highest award that a vessel can receive. And Kennedy did not receive one. Did an individual act of heroism take place aboard the vessel such that an individual was subsequently awarded the Medal of Honor or the Navy Cross? Again, uh, no, this did not happen on Kennedy. Was a president of the United States assigned to the vessel during his or her naval service? And again, the answer is no. Even though this vessel is associated with both President Kennedy himself and the Kennedy family, no one who has yet gone on to attain higher office, uh, such as president, is known to have served on board her. Uh, so that is interesting. I also like that they use the, the language his or her. Even though uh, we have yet to have a female president, we certainly can, and this criteria is supposed to go uh, forward into the future so that it's all standardized. So I love that. Uh, was the vessel the first to incorporate engineering weapon systems or other upgrades that represent a revolutionary change in naval design or war fighting capabilities? And here again, the answer is listed as no. And that's interesting to me um, because Kennedy does start to get, even though she's a conventional aircraft carrier, she gets some changes and modifications that make her uh, almost a prototype for the Nimitz class. Her engineering spaces are supposedly uh, subdivided in a way like a nuclear carrier of the Nimitz class and not as much as her near sister ships of the Constellation class. Uh, so there is some engineering um, development going on there. However, the Navy has deemed it to not be that significant. So whether they're saying that uh, the Nimitz class changes to their engineering plant just aren't all that significant, or uh, that hey, maybe a Nimitz class would be considered significant, but this one as just another step on the rung is not necessarily. Uh, so that's an interesting one. Uh, also, the final, uh, fifth and final criteria, did some other historic or socially significant event occur on board the vessel? Again, this answer is no. And so uh, historic evaluation conclusion is ineligible. I like the wording of that too, historic or socially significant. 
the vessel doesn't necessarily have to have like participated in some big important battle as as a flagship to be historically significant. So, for example, the uh, destroyer escort USS Mason during World War II had an all-black crew. So that is a socially significant event. It's not necessarily historically significant. Mason did not uh, participate in huge battles as fleet flagships or anything like that. But she is a stepping stone towards integrating the Navy at a time when um, black sailors had previously been limited to uh, just a handful of ratings. And by making a ship with an all-black crew, now these sailors are able to fulfill all of those ratings and even officer positions, which then proves that that is possible in the post-war world. The final part of this is the uh, historic preservation stakeholder comment section, where there are 60 days when this is put up for evaluation. This is created by a Navy historian. It's, it's put up for 60 days and other historians are able to comment on it like, hey, I think that uh, she was socially significant, or hey, you missed that this future president did serve on board during a training crew or something like that. Um, and on Kennedy's, the Navy received no written comments to modify this, and so it becomes the final. Uh, and maybe that's the difference. On page one, it says uh, the initial evaluation date and the final evaluation date. So that, that initial date on 12 July may well have been this is completed and put up for comment, and then 60 days later, um, it's a little bit before 20 September, uh, they have the final evaluation where they say, all right, there's been no uh, comments, this is now finished, or there have been comments, we've modified it to show such and such. While we're looking at this, I want to just run through this list and see uh, if New Jersey meets any of these criteria. New Jersey... Um, had already been turned into a museum ship by the time that these criteria take effect in 2010. So there isn't one of these documents for New Jersey or anything similar so far as I know. Um, so was the vessel award an individual presidential unit citation? No, she wasn't. Did an individual act of heroism take place aboard the vessel such that an individual was subsequently awarded the Medal of Honor or the Navy Cross? Nope, that didn't happen on board either. Uh, was a president of the United States assigned to the vessel during his or her naval service? Again, no. As far as we know, uh, that didn't happen. Was the vessel the first to incorporate engineering, weapon systems, or other upgrades that represent a revolutionary change in naval design or warfighting capabilities? This one's hard to answer. My, my gut reaction was to say no. Um, of course, as the second Iowa-class battleship, she wouldn't meet this for her World War II design. Arguably, you could say that Iowa being the, uh, the lead ship of the fastest class of battleships ever built might rev represent a revolutionary increase. I'm not sure I would make that argument uh, for any of the Iowa class. Uh, speed is great and all, but it, I'm not sure it's revolutionary in any way. She's using just a bigger version of the same power plants that have been used on, on many other ships. Um, that said, she was the first uh, surface warship to be equipped with Tomahawk cruise missiles. And as a weapon system still used by the Navy today, you could arguably say that uh, that, that was an important upgrade um, that this ship received. And since New Jersey was reactivated first, she was the first one to get this. So um, that is arguably a yes. My gut reaction is that uh, whatever was argued there, yes or no, when this was put up for comment, there, there might have been a counter argument to that. And finally, did some other historic or socially significant event occur on board the vessel? This is the most likely yes. Uh, for New Jersey because of her use as uh, fleet flagships through a variety of situations, primarily in uh, World War II, uh, but also during the early Cold War. Uh, I think it's, it's a pretty solid yes that uh, this ship is historically significant for um, the events that she participated in. So, 
it is important to note that uh, it is important to note that, like I said, New Jersey is deemed historically significant. She ends up on the National Register of Historic Places, uh, which they say that Kennedy should not be made eligible for. But she does not meet all five criteria. You only have to meet one of these five. So even if the answers are no, 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 yes, that's still good enough to make your ship historically significant. So once you are deemed historically significant, what happens? Well, the Navy, um, it may help your case in becoming a museum ship. Like I said earlier, not necessarily. It will allow the Navy, particularly Naval History and Heritage Command, uh, and the curator branch of Naval History and Heritage Command to remove more objects from the ship and preserve more of the ship for use in their museum system and for donation to other nonprofits outside of the uh, Navy system. And documentation relating to the ship is more likely to be sent to the National Archives and digitized quickly, and other sorts of uh, documentation, online resources like the Dictionary of American Naval Fighting Ships and other things like that are given priority in documenting that ship. Because again, there are a lot of ships. There is a huge backlog between the very small number of people who are uh, doing this information at the National Archives or in the Navy Curator's Office doing the Danfiss work. So all of these ships should eventually get this treatment, but these ships are given priority. So it's interesting to see an important ship like Kennedy um, is not given that treatment because her service is normal, average, uh, for a supercarrier at least. Uh, we talked about how it's not necessarily uh, helpful in becoming a museum ship. Let's look at the Samuel B. Roberts, the Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate, a really awesome ship. Um, her initial evaluation was from March 15th, uh, or, excuse me, March 12, 2015, and she was initially found to be eligible. Uh, final evaluation date was for 1 June 2015, eligibility for listing in the National Register of Historic Places, again, found eligible. Um, and it's worth pointing out that uh, Samuel B. Roberts was not placed on the uh, donation hold list. She was not uh, slated to be preserved as a museum ship. So even though she is eligible and historically significant, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. So let's jump over to why she is deemed historically significant. Was the vessel awarded an individual presidential unit citation? No. Uh, did an individual act of heroism take place aboard the vessel such that an individual was subsequently awarded the Medal of Honor or Naval, Navy Cross? No. However, the Legion of Merit was awarded to the ship's commanding officer, uh, 10 bronze stars, and uh, 14 Navy commendation medals, and two Purple Hearts, with an additional four Purple Hearts, were awarded to the crew. The magnificent manner in which the ship and her men stood this severe test compares most favorably with the Navy's essential core values. Uh, was the President of the United States assigned on board? No. Was the vessel the first to incorporate anything? No. Did some other historic or socially significant event occur on board the vessel? They don't put this inside the little award box. It just says, yes, see history summary. Uh, so we all know the history of Samuel B. Roberts. She takes uh, a mine hit in the Persian Gulf that uh, should have probably sunk her, and her crew manages to keep the ship afloat. Uh, and she was eventually returned to service later on. Uh, so historic evaluation conclusion. Eligible because of the distinguished lineage, so it's, it's citing the fact that she is named after the destroyer escort saying it'll be Roberts, and, uh, which is interesting because that's not a criteria on here, uh, and her story of survival that would stand as a tribute to the heroism inherent in that lineage from the man honored in the first ship to the courageous crew who kept the third ship alive. So here's an interesting final touch. Assessment of integrity uh, of, as appropriate, design, materials, workmanship, feeling, and or association. This was something that we didn't see on the, the Kennedy report uh, made a year later. The assessment is not decommissioned, ship retains its integrity. So that got me looking. Uh, the initial report is from 12 March 2015. 
the ship isn't decommissioned until May 2015. So this tracks with Naval History and Heritage Command going on board the ship right before it's decommissioned to remove important parts uh, and interact with the crew and find out what is important to the story of the ship. Uh, however, by the time the final evaluation is published in June of 2015, the ship had been decommissioned for about a week at that point. So they're saying that at this point, the ship retains its full integrity, which is very important for considering a ship for museum donation status. Um, as it turns out, she was not selected to uh, be held on donation hold, and so parts were stripped off of that ship. Um, both for maintaining ships in the active fleet, maintaining Perry class frigates that have been donated to foreign countries, and um, most recently, museum ships, including Battleship New Jersey, were allowed to go on board and strip other parts off of her. So at this point, uh, the report would no longer be accurate and the ship no longer retains its integrity. So there are a lot of other reports on there. I would love to see more personally, especially going back to the pre-2010 ships, um, but there's, there's a lot of reports on there. You should check them out, go through them, and, and uh, if you see anything interesting, drop us a comment down below. If any of these reports you'd like to see uh, a follow-up video made about, again, let us know in the comments section down below. Uh, th these are really interesting. I, didn't, I wasn't fully aware of these in the past, but um, it makes sense given the number of ships that the government would have to find a way to standardize determining which ones uh, get prioritized for things. So, what's a ship that you'd like us to review in the future? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. Today we'd like to thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring our video. Remember to use the link in the description below and use the discount code BATTLESHIP to get $5 off your next order. Uh, and you can use our special link, magicspoon.com slash battleship. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.